r slash no sleep posted by you slash sliver off reality i worked night shift at a music studio part two i listened to your guys advice and as much as i didn't want to go back there i knew i had to i still had the list of rules from that horrific night and my leg has healed up nicely and with the painkillers it's barely noticeable however i still hear that familiar wet shuffling every night as i lay in bed typically I'm asleep by the time the sirens start, but once I woke up to take a piss, and forgot about them. I'll never make that mistake again. I knew that if I fucked up again like I did last time, I would definitely pay the price. God may have been watching over me then, but I get the feeling that that was a one-time thing. Regardless, I have spent the last few weeks memorizing those rules like it was my holy bible, and knew exactly what to do, what to expect, and how to counter whatever the hell that thing threw at me. Regardless, I still had to deal with getting into that place. I don't expect I was earning employee of the month after my performance last time, and I couldn't find any trace of the man who'd hired me. This meant I'd have to break in. In my bag, I brought a 6 hour P226 in 9mm, in case things went south, some bolt cutters to get through the chain link fence, a backup battery for my phone, a flashlight, a small first aid kit, two syringes with 450 milliliters of morphine that I'd gotten from a friend, if the gun doesn't kill it, two spare magazines for the handgun, duct tape, to hide the glass breaking and hitting the floor, and of course, the rules. I left my shitty apartment at 10 pm, and drove up to that music studio. Nothing had changed much, a little bit more graffiti here and there, but still filled me with a feeling of dread. I parked in the same spot I had last time, and waited until 10.45 to make my move. I took the bolt cutters out, and created a hole that was big enough for me to get through but small enough that no one could see it in the poorly lit parking lot. To my surprise, the door was unlocked, I guess they didn't anticipate anyone breaking in, or at least past the chain link fence. I gripped the 9mm by my side, as I walked through the studio towards the main office, letting my fingers dig into the grip to a point where it was painful, safety off, and jumping at every little sound. When I got to my office, I opened the door with the keys that I'd accidentally stole last time. The familiar musty smell filled my nostrils, and I could still see bloodstains on the floor from last time. I placed my bag next to my desk, and leaned back in the office chair. I opened the door, and locked it behind me with a growing feeling of dread inside me, and began walking. Every once in a while, though, I would hear the creatures wet shuffling, but it was clear it was attempting to muffle them. I pretended not to hear, and to ignore it. I reached the stairwell, and walked up the stairs, and the squishy footsteps followed. The creature had no eyes, but somehow, I could feel them, on the back of my neck, almost a warmth, begging me to turn around and embrace the creature. No, I screamed in my head. Do not look. I remembered the creature's horrendous, yet strangely hypnotizing, and knew if the creature fell even into my peripheral vision, I could be killed. I had the gun loaded in its holster on my hip, and the syringes wrapped up in a fabric in my pocket, and was tempted to turn around, sprinted it and put the two syringes in its neck and then a bullet between the eyes, but I knew that when I turned around, I wouldn't make it further than one step, because even if I kept my eyes down, its enormous claws would slash and slice through my skin like a hot knife through butter. I made my way into the second floor, where I heard the expected crash of a bookshelf falling over, and with a strange newfound confidence, I repeated the lines. Sir, I believe you may have dropped something, I said. Suddenly, the wet shuffling got louder, and faster, and then I realized it. I was supposed to say sir, I'm afraid you may have dropped something. I fucked up, and now I was going to pay the price. I turned around, and saw the shadow of the creature coming at me, and at the last second, looked up to aim the pistol at its head. Bop. Pow. Pow. The creature let out a low, guttural scream that only Lucifer himself would be capable of producing, and fell over. I went over to look at it, and it was one of the most disgusting, yet beautiful and satisfying things I've ever seen. The creature that had been terrorizing me for the past month lay on the floor, dead, with a hole the size of my fist in the back of its head. However, it was moving. It looked like the inside of its brain was moving around like it was filled with maggots. Slowly though, the skull's edges were moving themselves back together, like tectonic plates. I knew it was only a matter of time before that son of a bitch got up and started moving again. But I also knew I couldn't leave with it still alive. I dug a syringe out of my pocket, and stuck it in the creature's neck unleashing so much morphine that it could kill a person four times over. And I still had another syringe. I stuck the second one in, and the creature's slow healing process began to stop. 
Holy shit, I exclaimed. I just killed that son of a bitch. Suddenly, the room filled up with a light so bright that its source could probably melt the sun. I closed my eyes, but it was still just as bright, and with my hands over my eyes it still felt like staring into the sun. The light, then got dimmer, so that I could actually see, and I watched as the creature began a strange regeneration process, and it burst into flames, but was soon healed of the holes in its head, and the morphine in its neck. It grabbed the syringes in its neck, and pulled them out and threw them at me, with such a force typically saved for gods. I ducked down behind a speaker, wary of how many bullets I had left, and opened fire. The bullets seemed to bounce off of it, and only slow it down, like someone had punched it in the face. I grabbed my phone, and did the only thing I could think of, call 911. The conversation was brief, as this asshole was still 10 feet away and had healed from three gunshot wounds to the head, but the operator thought I was joking, and with a laugh she said that she'd have an officer down there shortly. I ended up running around the room, almost waiting for this thing to become smart enough to realize that I was stalling it, but then I heard the police sirens. Apparently, so did he. With an almost superhuman speed he darted down the stairs and out front. I could hear the officers laughing, knowing it was a prank call, and each one trying to convince the other one that it was real. I watched from the window as these poor men got slaughtered by the creature, without any chance to react, and their limbs and organs spread throughout the parking lot. I jumped down through another window on the back of the building, so that he didn't see me. Some bushes broke my fall, and as I sprinted off into the night, I could hear the demonic scream behind me. I didn't dare stop for a second to catch my breath, not until I was in a more populated area, where I stumbled into a bar, and I didn't think the creature would follow me into a place with a lot of people, so I felt safe. I was wrong. I saw its shadow creep up the building steps, and as it threw the doors open, not one soul in that bar dared to make a sound. He made his way towards the back, towards me, just slashing and killing person after person, with no remorse, and no emotions. I escaped through the back door, where I could hear multiple sirens in the distance, and hid in a dumpster. Anyways, that's where I am now, and he's right outside. I'm not sure if he's toying with me, I think he's trying to find where I went. The smell of garbage turns out to mask your smell pretty well, though, and I think he smells traces of me, but in no specific direction.